Hello and welcome to New Filmmakers Los Angeles in partnership with Movie Maker Magazine. My name is Danny DeLillo and we're here at the South Park Center. I'm here with Gabriel with his movie Up the Five. Let's take a look at the clip. Rudy the Fourth? You named this thing? Yeah. You gotta name your vehicles, man. You didn't name yours? No. No wonder she ran out on you. I think we should have stopped for gas at that place. <sighs> Are we stopping? Um, I don't know where to begin, except I'm so happy that you're here. Thank you for giving us your film. Um, and for those that haven't seen it, tell us a brief synopsis of your film. It's kind of a fun, it's kind of like an in the day, you know, those movies that everything happens in one day. Mm -hmm. So basically, uh, our main protagonist falls for a girl that steals his Cadillac, and then he has to hitchhike a ride with a goofy, fun, odd guy to catch the, this girl that stole his Cadillac. It's such a fun movie to watch. Thanks. Like it, re it really is, and it's, it's amazing how you say it's all in one day, and of course, you know, it's a lot of work to make a film, so it was. It, it didn't take one day to shoot it, of course. Um, <laughs> but I, I just love the whole journey. It was such a testament to California. It was yeah. such a great road trip felt, and these characters was just came alive. Like I almost wanted to see them in a TV series because yeah. I wanted more from them. Yeah, our actors are really amazing. We so took we good. took like it took a kind of a year and a half to cast it because we casted it ourselves, my brother and I, uh, Jesse Adams. We did the whole thing ourselves, so we really were set on getting really good actors because yeah. with this kind of small film you have to have good talent otherwise you know it it's, falls flat so. exactly and i mean come on to you and jesse in a second because they are the brother dream team as they discovered uh, one day but where did this inspiration start for you making this particular film it really came down to like driving on a really boring highway we i was uh transferring i was getting my associate's degree from a junior college to uh, a four-year college and they had misprinted my transcripts, thank God. It's the best oh, mistake wow. that could have happened. The next day I drove down to Los Angeles and I was driving down the five and I was looking around at this highway that everyone hates, that no one wants anything, but then I saw some sort of beautiful wild west about it. And so we said, this is a place that needs to have a film about it. You know, yeah. sort of like, uh, yeah. So it was sort of, we kind of started this film sort of started with the location of Interstate 5 mm -hmm. as an inspiration. So I love it. And I, I love that you took something so mundane, just say boring and made a feature film. I mean, that's just, that's, that's, I love that creativity about you. Um, what was fascinating to me, this is your first feature film. You yeah. Think, you look like a very seasoned, you know, when you watch the film, it's like, it's, it feels like you've, okay, you've done this 30 times. It's fine. Um, Thank you. That's very nice. Now you say it took f about four years to make and twenty-one days to shoot. Yes. Um, how? I mean, how? How do you? How do you undertake when you want to make your first feature? How do you say you'd be like, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do this, and, and where do you even start? Well, you start doing the wrong things immediately, <laughs> yeah. and you basically, you kind of learn that certain things need to happen at certain times mm -hmm. uh, when you're doing such a big project it's you can get overwhelmed by thinking of this giant thing and i've got to do all this stuff but really what it matters is get a really good script mm -hmm. you know do a really good table read find really good actors mm -hmm. you know save up some money because this is a self-funded project mm -hmm. and then and then go for it so really what i learned a lot which i'm excited about is that it takes like little steps, a yeah. bunch of little steps to get to this big project, not trying to eat. I mean, mm -hmm. if you tr ever try to eat a burger all at once, it doesn't really work. To take a few bites of a burger and then digest it and chew it. And so. Oh, I love this analogy. There you go. Can I bring I cheeseburgers into anything that I can possibly. Yeah. We should have brought cheeseburgers into this we interview. We really should have done. Um, <laughs> but what I, what I loved last night was lovely to meet some of your wonderful cast members. Yeah. And you did something that I thought was so special that, you know, the, all, your two wonderful sisters that were in your film? Yeah. They got given a big bouquet of flowers. And I thought that is something rare you don't see that we don't see enough in independent filmmaking. And I was so happy to see that that was that was you bought those people well, they sisters. deserved it and we, i wish that our two lead actors could have been there as yeah. well basically what we have is uh this movie sort of like planes trains and automobiles meets thelma and louise so our girls are actually our bad guys which yeah. is kind of nice yeah and so their their scenes are more dramatic and then the guys are more silly so it's sort of a, a role reversal which yeah. we thought was really fun to sort of have a a warm water cold water we, it's funny and then yeah. it's dramatic it sort of gives you space to be able to laugh and, and not trying to make a joke all the time, you mm -hmm. know, but just, you know, letting the film ride in a certain way. So we kind of liked having comedy and drama in there. Uh, we also learned that like, 
making a comedy, you sort of just, it's better to approach it like a drama yeah. and then make it funny, not try yeah. to make a film, just be very, very funny, just go there. That. So we learned so much. I mean, it was, it was amazing. And the whole crew, I mean, we had drone, this drone operator, Reggie there. We had my, my uh, cinematographer, Paul Toomey. Everyone came out for this film and, and, and basically came out to the middle of the desert and filmed something uh, on a whim. I mean, it was really, I kind of like don't even believe it happened still. Does that, does that feel, does that, I mean, that must feel magical for you when you've, you know, created this project, this script, and you've got all these amazing people that are just there supporting this, this, this great passionate journey you're about yeah. to go on. It must feel like, a, like even in your, even though you're in the moment, you're kind of proud of this is going on essentially, right? Exactly. You yeah. And, 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 the, and the amount of people that showed up yesterday on our, on our, uh, our uh, premiere was amazing. I mean, yeah. it, those are a lot of people that will be working on the next film and doing a lot well, of Well, this is the thing. So, I mean, you know, there's a rare rare occasion when you just get this most incredible electric crowd, which we had at New Filmmakers. And, and as I've mentioned, it felt like a, a wild concert that, you know, several teenage girls were screaming over Justin Bieber. That's how, how the vibe was. It was fantastic. There was some great laughs. There was, was this one guy wonderful. that was laughing in the back. He was like, ho, 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 ho. See? I was like, that's so great. And you know you've done your job then, which is great, you know? Yeah, so those that, laughs. I mean, you know, when you're making a film like this, you sort of don't get any reciprocation for so long. Like if you're a musician, people dance and clap after every song, comedians. But with a movie, you sort of go at it for years. And then, and then you have one night like this mm -hmm. that it sort of all comes back to you in one great, uh, you know. It's amazing. Audience. So. Well, I just I mean, obviously you 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 had obviously you know the, the four leads, the two girls and two guys, the two two uh, wonderful sisters were there. Were so their dynamic was so fantastic, together, and they were so humble and modest when we when we met them last night and did their own stunts as well, which is fantastic. So for you as a director, how do you work with your actors? Like, what's your kind of process with them? With me, uh, well, my brother and I, we kind of uh, we kind of work together simultaneously. So uh, my brother is an, a musician, so he's so used to being in a band and getting good performances out. So he's mm -hmm. really good at that. At the time that I'm directing, I'm almost just a big fan of them because we've talked about it in the writing room. And mm -hmm. really, it's to be a really good writer. And then once we get there, you know, I you know, hopefully I only have to say four words. It's like mm -hmm. speed it up, slow it down, more emotion, less emotion. You know, mm -hmm. at that point, they sort of get what they want. And what was fun about the girls was we realized when we were shooting them, we're like, oh, we don't have enough scenes with them. So my brother would just go home, go to the hotel and scribble some things. And, and you know, we left this open you know we I didn't you know we only did two or three takes you know of each scene and really just sort of let the actors do whatever they want and you know with with an idea of what where each where scene going, needs yeah. to go and all that stuff so i mean it was a learning process and it was really really fun i mean at the point of directing you sort of just got to be a cheerleader and have yeah. fun uh you know this project i really i didn't have a, an assistant director or a lot of positions so i definitely was running the ship as yeah. well as being the creative guy, which is, you know. Was that you know. the biggest challenge you faced, you kind of felt going through the process? I, I guess so, but you know, um, I, I've done a lot of below the line work. I've done some ADing, I've done some production designing, some costumes. So I sort of like understand film sets pretty well. Mm -hmm. There was a period in, in, the, in the set where I had a producer actually who was this nice guy, this writer, but halfway through the film, he, he came up to me and he shook my hand. He said, this project's not worth my time. I gotta go. And I said, okay, see you later. I don't want to convince anyone. So that, I think the biggest, when you asked me last night, the biggest pro thing was we basically had to change the ending of our movie because of a schedule change, which was amazing because wow. instead of having a constricted script that you've been working on for five years or four years, and you this has to be the ending, it's sort of, the ending kind of came uh, organically, which wow. I think is great. I think at the yeah. end of the film, it gets even better, which is yeah. kind of what we wanted to do. We, we don't want a film to get worse. You know, you no. want it to end and then people be like, oh, it got really well, great. It was an actor's dream when you give people that freedom as well, you know, yeah. to kind of express themselves. And, yeah. and, and I'm sure you found things along the way where you just found moments you weren't probably expecting between the actors, which must have been a great experience for you as a director. Yeah, yeah, like there's a great scene later in the movie where our lead actress Grace Mayo and our funny guy Mike Kurtz are in a van together and they specifically didn't want to meet each other before the scene so mm -hmm. when we shot that scene uh, we it was super great so mm -hmm. I mean we, we shot with one camera uh, mm -hmm. we shot on a red dragon uh, next movie we'll, we'll do two cameras because we did so much improvisation mm -hmm. that it's, it would be nice to get some coverage yeah for uh, sure. but yeah I mean the actors killed it and oh. the crew killed it I mean it was really it was I, a beautiful film to watch like it was you. so it was so picturesque I mean of course the music was fantastic as the well. music was great my I brother mean, Jesse 
it's I mean, did, is it? I mean, did is it? Is it a wonder? Did, did your whole like family look at you and think, "Wow, we have such talented, you know, children and and, and cousins and etc." Is that what they feel? Because what a what a dream team you both got, you and Jesse. Yeah, it's kind of crazy to approach a film as as a solo artist and you feel like you're your own director and then your brother comes in and you guys click so well it's like yeah. being an olympian and and two people running the 400 meter dash or yeah. a doctor doing a heart surgery with two people you sort of are cheating in the, the way so uh we're excited my brother and i that we found this connection and if that producer didn't leave then uh, jesse and i would probably wouldn't have had an adams brothers picture you know it would have been something else so everything sort of went and Worked you know way it should. my recommendation for anyone making a film like this is just to really have fun yeah you know well, really that, really have fun and shoot as much as you can you know? I, I think that's again you can never have too much footage right so if you've got the time to do it as yeah. well um i think that's the one thing i felt from your experience last night in new filmmakers and Obviously, wh what is what is that feeling like? You know, four years into the journey, what is that feeling like to have your first feature on the big screen with a whole crowd supporting you? That's New great. filmmaker say, what was that experience like for you last night? It was fantastic because uh, you know the beautiful curse of Los Angeles is we're all procrastinating dreamers and we all have these ideas. And I work on film sets as as my day job, so. Everyone has an idea, they all want to do these things. So for a few years I was there like, yeah, I'm gonna do a movie and everyone's like, okay, cool, mm -hmm. cool, cool. But now that I've done one, it's like everyone takes me more seriously and, and uh, it sort of was just, you know, I'm still digesting it, but it was it was pretty amazing to have mm -hmm. something polished. I'm not really a great, at, I'm great at starting projects, but finishing projects. So I was just really glad that you know, I worked on this one feature, didn't have six other scripts trying to do, you know, yeah. just focused on one feature. And that's my recommendation is like, get your cheapest, easiest project, mm -hmm. uh, which having four main characters, eight locations, road trip is not the easiest, but no, we thought it was, challenge, you know, yeah. but having, having the music already kind of be there, we, mm -hmm. you know, is amazing. That's one sixth of the project itself. So I knew that the music was going to be good. And in road trip projects, you want really good music. And oh, then, uh, it we was shot so good. Yeah, it was great. Yeah, it was, a, it was a wonderful soundtrack. And I think one of the things I, I noticed from just your cast and your crew and your audience last night is that you're, you know, you're a good guy, you know, and a good guy to be around, and you steer the ship really well. And I think that's why you had so much support last night, and that all your, you know, cast were so and had such a good experience with you. Um, and obviously you want to work with these people again, I imagine, as well. Yes. So it's yes. really good. So what is next for you? Next, we're, uh, we're doing a few things. Um, my brother and I are doing our second feature. Uh, we're we're uh, casting a bunch of stand-up comics. Oh, Because awesome. they're the most talented people that aren't acting. You right, know what exactly. I mean? So yeah. we, we went to the comedy store uh, about six months ago, and we just saw a few comics, and we're like, oh, my God, this, this is like a gold mine That's of people. Amazing. So um, we're excited because this next script, we're writing with people in mind, which I think is very helpful. Yeah, yeah, It's yeah. really helpful to sort of have some sort of anchor in yeah. another character or person. So we're doing a sort of detective um, white trash Sherlock Holmes-ish story. So uh, oh, can't wait. more to come on that one. Uh, we're really excited about that. So. Oh my goodness! No, listen, I'm I, up to five. Is 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 such a great feature, and it'll be hopefully available on all the on the all, all the where people find it soon. Kind of coming to an iPhone soon. near you. Yeah, coming to an iPhone near you. There you go. <laughs> uh, it'll probably be on Amazon or something. Yeah, we're actually right in the middle of. Uh, getting into other festivals and doing yeah. other distro deals. So I'm Fantastic. not really sure I've never given up a baby for adoption. So yeah, I'm no, I know, to... I know, for the whole world just to view it as well. So there you go. Well, I'm, I'm so glad that you got your first one, you but please bring the second one to us as well. And, and congratulations on making this. And, thank you, um, man. And thank you for great job. this interview and for being so awesome last night at oh. the, the hosting. And, you know. I can't do it without you. So there you go. Thank yeah, you very right. much. He's right. Yeah, <laughs> he's right. He's right. He's right. <laughs> Gabriel, up the fire. Thank you very much. Love you, mom. Oh.